Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing marvelously well. In this episode, we're going to be trying out the new Jewel Shelford Mic Pre. It's a limited edition two channel version of their flagship preamp. So before we do anything else, let's listen to it. Check out this track. So we mic the drums with the Loughton 120s, a pair of those on the ride and the hi-hat. And it's because this is obviously a two input mic pre, we did it in two passes. So the first pass was a Lewitt 340 Rex on the kick drum and a 57 on the snare. The second pass was those lovely Loughton 120s on the ride and the hi-hat. The bass guitar was mic'd with the 201, that's the Mojave 201 FET. The vocal was also cut with the Mojave 201 FET. And the acoustic guitar was cut with the Loughton 120. The 
electric piano from the Nord actually went straight into the mic pre. Now, let's check out and listen to the sounds. Now, of course, don't forget, you can download these files for yourself. You can do any combination of mix you want. Every single artist played everything five times. So once with zero silk at all on it. Then once with silk at 50% on the red, 50% on the blue, and 100% on the red, and 100% on the blue. Now, the red silk gives you extra harmonics in the high mids and high end. The blue gives you extra harmonics in the low and low end. Honestly, it's pretty fantastic. You've got input gain here. You've got an overall trim. So we had the trim all the way down. Now, you might ask why we did that. If you know when I use 1073s, I push as hard as I can. I want to get as much of the sound as the mic pre as possible. Some people might do the opposite. They might go full output there and then keep it super, super clean. Well, we wanted to exaggerate so you can hear the quote unquote analogness. I know that's not really a word, but I just made it up. So there is going to be some audible, you know, breakup, but that's kind of what I wanted to test. You know, we don't need a clean digital signal. The other stuff we've done with Rupert's stuff before, as you know, we've always pushed really hard to get the sound of the pre. Personally, I think it sounds awesome like this. So trim down and then gain control here. Um, you've got, obviously got phantom on off for all of the condenser mics, of which all of them were except for the 57 on the snare. And then of course, up high pass filter. And what's nice about this is it's continuously variable. And we went to just under about a hundred or so for the acoustic guitar. Now here's where the magic happens. Well, the magic happens in the mic pre here, obviously when you push it, but the additional magic of course is the silk control. You've got the red where you can get the high mids and the high end, you know, pushed. And so what we did is we did it with it off like this, and then we did it at 50% and then 100%. Now, the reason why we did that, obviously 50 and 100 on the blue, the reason why we did that is because it's obviously continually variable. You can do whatever you like with it from here, but you know, the subtle differences and the fact that I already got every musician to play everything five times. Can you imagine if it was one, two, three, four? It would be about 200 times. So you can get the idea. You can hear it with it off, you can hear it with half, you can hear it with in full. There's up to 72 dB, of low noise class A gain. So you can really use this to drive pretty much any mic that you might have. You have a ton of gain here. And then of course with the trim, you can push this like crazy, turn the trim down and really hit this hard, put on the silk and have some fun. So let's have a look at the back of the Shelford, the dual Shelford, the model 5025. You've got a ground lift here on both channels. You've got the main output, and then there is a minus 6 dB output. So you can basically plug into that, go into your interface, and just get that extra 6 dB of gain there if you really want to drive this hard. Now, of course, there's a mic input here. We did go in with the DI box through the keyboards, went straight in there. It's really straightforward, really easy to use, and sounds freaking awesome. So let's check out some of the sounds. So this is just the mic pre running fairly hot. I'm going to listen to all the drums because I think with all the mics together, you can hear the differences pretty dramatically. I'm going to go to 100% blue. So now this is with the, the low end with additional harmonics. And you can immediately hear it in that kick drum. Listen to that. Back to the off position. That's nice. There's still a lot of low end coming out of that, but back to 100%. Huge, absolutely massive. I'm really quite a fan of using the low end harmonics boost. I feel like, you know, that's a big thing that we like about analog equipment. We like that sort of additional low end, the quote unquote catchphrase or catch word, I should say, warmth. You know, warmth to me just means a lot of transformers working hard, rounding off transients, giving us a big fat low end. Now we can go the other way. We'll go 100% red. So this is the high mids immediately, not wanting to say look, but I'm going to. If you look, you see all the waveforms got a little skinnier. So this is where really the, you know, the high harmonics are being boosted. 
still a decent amount of low end. Because the cymbals are overdubbed, you could go and split this up and listen to the kick and the snare on the blue and have the hi-hat and the cymbals on the red. You know, then you're going to get a natural kind of lift. All kinds of fun things you can do. The bass obviously sounds really, really good. All settings, we'll go to the off position. And then we'll go to 100% blue. 100% red. I mean, they all sound great. The bass itself, the low end, actually felt really good the whole time. So I think it's just a case of like choosing what you like. The blue would obviously be the natural way to go. You know, if you want that extra low end that you can take off afterwards. Acoustic guitars, this was high passed. So 100% blue is probably not going to be that. The thing about this is you're buying multiple mic pre's in one unit. I mean, that is really an extension of Rupert's brain, isn't it? He's famous for making transformers, like incredibly famous for making transformers. So this continuously variable silk control here and the fact that obviously you can change its characteristics is pretty huge. And the fact that honestly, like I like to use it, you can crank the gain and bring the output down so you can hit it really hard and not overload your um, input of your interface is also huge. It's not to say there isn't wonderful digital products out there. Of course there are, but this is one of the things we love about analog. I will say all of the background vocals were recorded without any silk on it because there is a schnizzle ton of them and it took a few hours to get these down, a couple of hours. And I just don't know, I'd probably be here all week repeating these in all 27 different variations. <laughs> so the dual shelf foot is lovely. It is Rupert's flagship unit. They're only doing a very limited run of 300 pieces of this worldwide. So we're really happy to get this. This is the only one I think around at the moment. And once we finish this demo, we are shipping it back. So the transformer game mic prees like Rupert's other designs use a step up transformer on the microphone input. That provides an additional 15 dB of gain straight away. And this specially designed transformer, along with the careful integration of the surrounding Class A circuitry, is really part of the magic that you can hear on thousands of classic recordings. Rupert's design and his, I suppose, his legendary use of transformers is what brings in the extra harmonic richness that we associate with Rupert Neve designs. So even at $4,000, which is a lot of money, bear in mind this is a dual mic pre. If you were going to go and buy a pair of 1073s, vintage ones would be more than that for one channel, a lot more than that for one channel. Some of the best reproductions, and we all know the names, we're, we're fond of them, also would be at least that a channel. So Something that has so much variation with the silk control, with the fact that you can run these super hot with the trim down, pretty tasty mic pre's. And of course, they're only making 300. So for the, uh, the connoisseur, somebody who wants something pretty special that's going to be the only mic pre you'll need, it's not the cheapest out there, but when you compare it against what it's running up against and the fact that it can do all of that and more, it's pretty darn good value for money. So reading a bit more about this mic pre, talking of Rupert as a transformer designer, it's really important to note, for those of you that are into this geeky stuff, that there is this mu metal shielding of the input transformer. And apparently, this results in the preamp being flat between 10 hertz, actually below 10 hertz, to above 60 kilohertz, basically giving you the purest possible tone. Now, I pushed it harder because that's what we do. But if you want a clean, beautiful, pristine, clean, beautiful mic pre, this is for you. And if you want something colored 
and textural and all kinds of fun stuff, then you can use the silk, you can push the mic pretty hard, you can turn the trim down, and you can add all of that additional harmonic content that we love. Now, I'm not a smart electronics engineer, and but many of you are. So when I tell you this, you'll understand what I mean. I was always told by smart electronics engineers that the power supply, the voltage, is really, really super important. And the power supply with this is double the voltage of the original 80s series modules. So if you go back to like the classic modules that we grew up on with, this has got double the voltage. Plus, it's obviously a completely discrete design, meaning you can really drive this really hard or keep it open and clean. All electronics engineers, please describe that to the lay people like myself as to why that might be. I'd love to know a bit more. I hope you have fun with these multi-tracks. We really did ourselves have a lot of fun recording this. It's great to work with Katie Ferrara. She's such an incredible singer. Steve Magora, of course, is an incredibly talented background singer, lead singer, piano player, you know, there's a reason why he's playing in Toto. It's because he's stupidly talented. And then, of course, the great Blair Sinter, who is currently playing, I believe, with Melissa Etheridge and was with John Fogarty. Um, and again, Alanis' drummer after Taylor Hawkins left. Really incredibly talented people. So download the multitracks, mix it for yourself. There'll be a details if you want to buy this unit and it's something that you want. You want something that can give you all of these variations in tone. I'd highly recommend it. We're obviously huge fans. We're not keeping this one. We'll try and get one of the limited edition. The reason why we're not keeping it is because we cannot keep it because it's the only one they have at the moment and it's probably being sent to other people to try out. So thanks ever so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. There is no giveaway with this one. It's There's only 300 they're making. It's just, you know, say la vie. Thank you ever so much, Rupert Neve Designs, for sending it to us so we could try it out. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget, download the multitracks. Try it for yourself. Do some additional production. And of course, if you're Academy members, we will be reviewing your mixes in the Academy. So don't forget to post them in there. I'm sure Eric is going to put the multitracks up in the Academy, aren't you, Eric? Right now. Right now. All right. Thanks, everybody. So long. Farewell. Au revoir. Adios.